Hello. In this video, we are going to derive the energies for ethylene, a pi conjugated system, using simple Huckel theory. First, recall that the carbon skeleton of ethylene can be written this way. We have a carbon-carbon double bond, and we can label the carbon atoms involved in the pi conjugated system this way, one and two. Also recall that by the variational principle, we can find the energies of a system of molecular orbitals by solving this particular determinant. So this is the case where we have two molecular orbitals involved. And then we have H22 is the S22. And we set this determinant equal to zero. In the case of ethylene, we realize that the sigma and pi orbitals are so different from each other in energy, and they are different by symmetry, that we can treat the sigma and the pi system separately. So in the Huckel theory, we uh, use a variation of this particular determinant to solve for the pi conjugated system. So in the simple Huckel theory, there are a number of simplifications and approximations that we make in the secular determinant to make computation easier. One of the first things that we do is we realize that S11 equals S22, this is the self-overlap. So this is the overlap of an atomic orbital with itself. And since these orbitals are normalized, this integral, the overlap integral, is equal to 1. Within the Huckel system, we otherwise neglect overlap so that S12, this is the overlap between 1 and 2, is the same by symmetry as the overlap between atom 2 and atom 1, and we set this to be 0. So we call this neglect of overlap. Next, we set the integral H11. So this is the Coulomb integral for the energy of an electron on atom number 1, and we call this alpha. That's the energy of a pi electron on a carbon atom. And this is exactly equal to the energy of an electron on atom number two. So we call these both alpha. On the other hand, for H12, so this is a resonance integral. So this is the energy of an electron in a bond that's shared between atoms one and two. And within the Huckel system, the important feature is whether the two atoms are directly connected. So if they're directly connected, this integral H12, which is the same as H21, the resonance integral, is defined to be this value beta, which is normally a negative number. If we had more atoms in the molecule, and we're referring to the resonance integral between two atoms that are not connected, in that case, the integral will be set to the value of zero. So, what does that give us in the case of Huckel theory? Well, that simplifies our secular determinant here to the following expression. So we have alpha minus the energy, beta, beta, alpha minus the energy, equals zero. So that is what we get if we start with this secular determinant and then apply these Huckel approximations. Next, it's often very convenient to make the following 
uh, series of manipulations. The first manipulation we like to do is divide each side by beta. Zero divided by beta keeps the right hand side as equal to beta. So we get that alpha minus the energy divided by beta is the term in this position. Beta divided by beta gives us one. We, we notice that if we divide a determinant by a particular value, we take each entry and divide it by that value. B divided by B is again equal to one. And then alpha minus the energy divided by beta is alpha divided by the energy divided by B. Next, we can do one last feature, which makes life easier. And we simply make the assignment, we let a new variable x be equal to alpha minus the energy divided by beta. Now, using our substitution, we get that we have to determine x1, 1, 1, x is equal to 0. When we have a 2 by 2 determinant, we just have a general 2 by 2 determinant. So let's call the entries a, b, c, and d. This is, by definition, equal to ad minus b times c. If you're a directional thinking person, a nice way of thinking of this formula is to think of it as the northwest entry times the southeast entry, and we subtract from that the northeast entry times the southwest entry. This is sort of an intuitive way of coming up with exactly the same formula that we have shown here for any 2 by 2 determinant. So, using the definition of the value of a 2 by 2 determinant, we notice that we have x times x minus 1 times 1. So this converts to x squared minus 1 equal to 0. And then we simply want to solve for x. We notice this gives us that x squared is equal to 1. We take the square root of each side, and we notice that we have two solutions because we have a quadratic equation, and that x has the values of either plus or minus 1. <clears throat> one thing which we can do is to now take this value for x, back substitute it into our expression alpha minus the energy divided by beta is equal to x. But let's also notice something. Uh, x is the root of this equation. So instead of calling it x, let's just call it the root for a second. So using the same exact substitution that we did before, the root is equal to alpha minus the energy divided by beta. And the reason for doing this is, is as follows. Let's solve for the energy. We multiply each side of the equation by beta, add e to each side, and then subtract uh, beta times the root from each side. And if we do that, just use an ordinary Algebra 1 style manipulation, we get that the energy is equal to alpha minus beta times the root. So this will be useful because since we're going to use this exact same substitution in every case of Huckel theory, because it's much easier to write x than it is to write alpha minus the energy divided by beta in every case. Once we've solved for the roots of the equation that we get from this solving this secular determinant, we can write down the energies uh, on site merely by using the fact that we know the roots. So, so for one of the roots, we see that since the, the one of the roots is minus one, that gives us the case where the energy is alpha plus beta. If we use the case where the root is plus one, that gives us that the energy is alpha minus beta. 
And the last important question we have is, since beta is not equal to zero, these two energies are distinct. So we have a higher energy state and a lower energy state. Which one is the ground state? Well, since by assumption, the, uh, the resonance integral beta is negative because it's a, uh, a bonding style of interaction, alpha minus beta is actually lower in energy than alpha minus beta. So alpha plus beta is our ground state. And the next higher energy state is going to be the alpha minus beta state. Effectively, we can think of the alpha plus beta as a bonding orbital and alpha minus beta as the anti-bonding orbital. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.